Hello, I'm Sichen. Today, I'm going to talk about how to use spectral clustering to solve graph partition. Grrr. Let's first review what graph partition is. Given an undirected graph G, our goal is to divide vertices into two disjoint groups, A and B. In this example, intuitively, we can easily identify the best partition. The yellow partition down here is much better than the other two green partitions on the right. So how can we define a good partition of G? A good partition is to minimize the given graph cut criterion, which means to maximize the number of within-group connections and to minimize the number of between-group connections. But how can we efficiently identify such a partition in a more general way? Spectral clustering. Spectral clustering goes back to Donas and Hoffman, who first suggested constructing graph partitions based on eigenvectors of the adjacency matrix. In the same year, Fittler discovered that bipartitioning of a graph are closely connected with the second eigenvector of the graph Laplacian, and he suggested to use this eigenvector to partition a graph. Since then, Spectral clustering has become one of the most popular modern clustering algorithms. Anyway, I like the name spectral. Grrr. To understand spectral clustering, we have to get familiar with three notations. Adjacency matrix, degree matrix, and the Laplacian matrix. Take this graph on the left as an example. The columns and the rows of an adjacency matrix show the adjacency condition of the nodes. If there is an edge between the node i and j, then the corresponding element is 1. We can see that node 1 has three adjacent nodes, 2, 3, and 5, so the corresponding entries are 1, which are red. Degree matrix D has the degree of nodes i as the i's diagonal entry. Since node 1 has a degree of 3, the corresponding entry is 3. The Flasian matrix L is equal to matrix D minus matrix A. The Flasian matrix has really amazing properties, though I will not give proof here. Let's go through an example step by step to show how spectral clustering works. Usually, there are three steps. Firstly, pre-processing. Build Laplacian matrix L of the graph. Secondly, decomposition. Find eigenvalues lambda and eigenvectors x of the Laplacian matrix L. Notice that the eigenvalues lambda are sorted from the smallest to the largest. Then, map vertices to corresponding components of the second eigenvector x2. Lastly, grouping. Sort components of X2. Identify clusters by splitting the sorted vector X2 into two parts. Here we use the naive approach, split at the value 0. Positive points belong to cluster A and negative points belong to cluster B. Great! We separate the two groups. This is an example of two clusters. As we can see that these two points represent these two points from the left. These two points are from here. These points are from here. And these points are from here. Here is another example with obvious more clusters. How do we partition the graph into k clusters? There are two basic approaches. The first choice is recursive by partitioning which means recursively apply the bipartitioning algorithm in a hierarchical manner. So we can first cut here, and then here, and then here. The other choice is cluster multiple eigenvectors, which means using multiple eigenvectors. Ta-da! We can separate the mass into k groups. The last point, how to select the cluster number. Eigen gap is the difference between two consecutive eigenvalues. The cluster number is the value k that maximizes eigen gap. In this example, 
the Eigen gap between lambda 2 and lambda 1 is the biggest, so cluster number k equals to 2. The success of spectral clustering is mainly based on the fact that it does not make any assumptions on the form of the clusters, as opposed to k-means, where the resulting clusters are always convex sets. Spectral clustering can solve very general problems, like intertwined spirals. Moreover, spectral clustering can be implemented efficiently even for large datasets, as long as we make sure that the similarity graph is sparse. Once the similarity graph is chosen, we just have to solve a linear problem. However, choosing a good similarity graph is not trivial, and spectral clustering can be quite unstable under different choices of the parameters of for the neighborhood graphs. Also, sp sparse representation does not consider nonlinear data sets, where data points rest in a union of manifolds. Moreover, k-means is used to produce the final clustering labels, and this process has the drawback of initial sensitivity. The paper called Unified Spectral Clustering with Optimal Graph claims that they address the above problems. So let's see what they have done. Rather than using predefined similarity matrix, the similarity graph is adaptively learned from the data in kernel space by combining similarity learning with subsequent clustering into a unified framework, we can ensure the optimality of the learned similarity graph. Unlike existing spectral clustering methods that work in three separate steps, like we have mentioned before, this simultaneously learns similarity graph, continuous labels, and discrete cluster labels. By leveraging the inherent interactions between these three subtasks, they can be boosted by each other. Based on a single kernel model, they learn the optimal combination of multiple kernels. Sparse representation assumes that all the points lie in a union of independent or disjoint subspaces and are noiseless. This is the sparse representation equation. But in real case, nonlinear data makes the representation less informative. Record from SVM algorithm, nonlinear data may represent linearity when mapped to an implicit higher dimension space where a kernel function. To fully explore data information, the paper uses a kernelization from framework. So they propose the method in kernel space. To solve the kernel dependent issue, a multiple kernel approach is later proposed. The paper changes the sparse representation equation into a new model equation to efficiently and effectively solve the equation. An alternative method is used to update the variable matrix, since matrix Z, P, F, and Q are coupled with each other, we could reach an overall optimal solution. However, the SCSK algorithm also has a drawback. Although the single kernel model SCLK can automatically learn the similarity graph matrix and discrete cluster labels, its performance will strongly depend on the choice of kernels. This calls for the multi-kernel algorithm, SCMK. Suppose there are a total number of R different kernel functions. Now, the above model will learn the similarity graph, discrete clustering labels, and kernel weights by itself. By iterating, updating Z, F, and W, each of them will be refined according to the results of the others. Extensive experiment de demonstrates the superiority of both the proposed method SCSK, the single kernel model, and SCMK, the multi-kernel model, which highlighted in both phase. 
as compared to existing clustering approaches. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.